Welcome to episode 14 of The Week in Gear, the show in which I rank the most exciting guitar gear released in the last seven days, all the way up to my pick of the week. So if you are a gear addict, make sure to hit that subscribe button and prepare to get gas. Whew. Got a bit of a cough this week. This week sees a dreamy ambient reverb from Walrus Audio and even more crazy high-priced Epiphones to celebrate their 150th anniversary. We'll get into that in a moment after a short word from our sponsor, Pedal Train. Pedal Train boards are strong and light because they're made from hand-welded aircraft-grade aluminium. Does this mean your pedal board can fly? Well, no, but a nano-sized board can fit in your hand luggage, and if you go for the Terra 42, the sky's the limit. Whatever your pedal board needs are, Pedal Train will have something to suit you. Check them out at the link below. Okay, let's kick off this week's most exciting gear releases with something buckety from Strymon. The Brig is a new Bucket Brigade delay pedal from Strymon. This is Strymon's second compact pedal after the Cloudburst and is the smaller brother of their Brigadier delay. It has three modes, the 3205, the 3005 and Multi and seems very capable of not only tasty repeats, but also some musical oscillation. You can go from simple slapback to stereo ping pong delay soundscapes. Even though some features from the Brigadier are missing, there is still an ability to tap tempo and the Brig has stereo out and USB-C for up to 300 MIDI presets and firmware updates. Strymon still seem to be the kings of DSP emulations, and if you're running a MIDI-based board, this could be a great addition. The demo video is really promising, and the Brig seems to have a lot of the advantages of a Bucket Brigade delay without the noise floor. It's coming in at 299 euros, and I will get one in my hands soon. Last week, I spoke about Epiphones being overpriced, and this seemed to strike a chord with a lot of you. Some positively, some not so positively. However, I felt bad and I wondered if I'd actually been fair to Epiphone. But now Gibson are back doing what they do best, relying on the work of others in the company's past as an excuse to sell you guitars. Yeah, they're still doing it. The Epiphone 150th anniversary brings us four limited edition models, a Sheraton, a Wiltshire, a Crestwood, and a Zephyr. Now I'm not gonna go too deep on these because there's lots of specs to consider, but let's just say that from $799 to $1,299, these guitars are not cheap, but I do find them absolutely stunning. Again, in Europe, prices are through the roof and that makes me want to dislike them, but they are so pretty. I'm an absolute sucker for the Batwing headstock, so that Crestwood could possibly tempt me into giving money to Gibson. What's happened to me? Right, control yourself, Andy. Let's take a trip to England for number four. Orange have released an all valve 30 watt amp called the OR30. Now I make no secret that I have a huge soft spot for Aid Emsley, the chief amp designer at Orange, and he comes up with some of the most exciting and authentically great amps in the modern guitar world. This is no different. The OR30 is a 30 watt single channel tube amp with three 12AX7s in the preamp section, a single 12 AU7 in the effects loop, and four EL34 power tubes, and a five AR4 tube rectifier. So when Orange say this is all tube, this is all tube. Although this is a single channel amp, it also has a foot switchable secondary volume setting, and you can switch the OR30 from 30 watts down to two watts. It's available in black, Orange, of course, and it's coming in at a very tasty 1,999 euros or $1,799. I love orange amps. I love their grit and their distortion and the color. And the OR30 seems to be designed to be simple, but very versatile whilst pulling no punches on the valviness. This is definitely on my list of amps that I have to try and I will get the opportunity in about one month. So I will report back on that, but I suspect my smile shall be very wide. In at number three this week is the Boss GM800 Guitar Synthesizer. Are you tired of your guitar sounding like a guitar? Well, Boss are here to help you make it sound like 
anything else really, a whole bunch of other instruments. The official demo video by Alex Hutchins is phenomenal. Just the right amount of cheesy MIDI synthy stuff and GM instruments with also some usable and high quality sounding patches. Boss promised that this system offers natural playing feel and solid tracking stability, which is very encouraging. There are over 1200 tones and 70 rhythm sounds, including a very beautiful convincing piano and stuff from Roland's Juno and Jupiter synths. For the guitar players, there's the new GK5 pickup and for our bass playing friends, there is the GK5B pickup. Both pickups are lower profile than the previous Boss offerings and come with adjustable internal sensors for different bridge spacings. The GM800 will set you back around 799 euros and the pickup another 279 euros or 299 euros for the base version. So this is not a cheap addition to any rig, but it looks like a wonderful way to get creative and I urge you to go and watch the demo video. Quite honestly, there is still something icky about guitar MIDI pickups that my grunge origins can't seem to accept. But this new GM800 sounds so good that I actually think we've reached a point where guitars with non-guitar sounds should be accepted. My desire to try one is sky high. Number two this week goes to an unlikely adorable guitar from EVH the EVH limited edition star. In particular, the MAD, Matt Army Drab version. Inspired by Eddie's old Charvel star, there are four guitars in this new range, all with basswood bodies and a Floyd Rose 100 locking tram with EVHD tuner. They've got a bolt-on quarter sawn maple neck with a C profile, Goto tuners, ebony compound radius fretboard that goes from 12 inches to 16 inches, and that's stacked with 22 jumbo frets. As for the electronics, we're talking one pickup, an EVH Wolfgang at the bridge. There's just a single volume pot with a treble bleed circuit and a red arcade button style kill switch on that lower horn. It's like someone had a mad fever dream where Charvel, Dan Electro and Gibson all got mashed up into one. And then upon waking, this is what that person drew. I dig it so hard. I don't know why exactly, but it has really touched a button deep inside me. Sadly, there's no hard case, but an EVH economy gig bag, which doesn't seem great, but is better than nothing. I'm not a shredder by far, but this looks like such a fun, well-specced guitar that at $1,399, I can see a lot of people trying to stretch their pocket money for these. My pick of the week is a pedal that gave me so much fun over the last couple of weeks. Walrus Audio have released a stereo version of their highly popular ambient reverb, the Slur, and called it the Slur Ur. Where is it? Got it here somewhere. Oh, bugger it. The Slur Ur, or slower, has five modes, a new stretch control, stereo in and out, and five custom modulation settings. There's also a width mode, but when I reviewed this earlier this week, I just left the width mode on wide for maximum spread. And you can watch that review if you want by clicking that card up there. I fell deeply in love with this pedal and you could absolutely fill a weekend with just playing the slur. And I could most certainly use just this and a guitar and a stereo amp to induce sleep in even the worst insomnia sufferers. It is pricey at 399 euros, but in my opinion, there is currently no other ambient reverb that has the subtlety and the expanse that the slow uh does. I genuinely could not find one unusable sound in there. And with presets built in, you can save your three favorites. As I said in the review, if you own a slur, then this will take your experience quite a few notches up. And if you're new to ambient reverbs, I would totally skip the smaller brothers and go for this big daddy version. Okay, that's it for this week and what a week it was. Thank you to Pedal Train for sponsoring. There is more information about them in the video description. If you enjoyed this and want to be kept up to date on all new guitar gear, go ahead and click there to subscribe. Let us know what your pick of the week is in the comments section. And as always, there are also links in the video description for up-to-date pricing in your region. I'll see you next time.
Bye-bye.